Welcome to the Liberty Dad Podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Changing things up a bit, today we'll discuss three topics, minimum wage, foreign aid, and farm subsidies. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty, but speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local libertarian city council candidate, Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tub. Pastor Tub, a father of three, shares the same vision that I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for this se- the theme for this season of the Liberty Dad podcast is libertarians on 25 issues. Each episode focuses on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. However, we are changing things up. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, maybe even less if we're good at it, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view minimum wage, foreign aid, and farm subsidies. With that, let's dive right in. Tub, how hey, are you today? I'm splendid. All right, he we're diving splendid. right in. We're diving right we're in. Right in. We're not going to talk about anything cool today about what we've we're already had because we spent the past we spent hour and a half. All, like time is ticking away. Yes. All I see is money going. There goes another. Another guy. No, no, right. Dollar that fast? Good right. Lord, we are right. working in the same. We I are know. not working in the same circles. All right. All right. So let's get right into it. So let's talk about the issue today. So first okay. and foremost, real quick, we're yes. going to talk about three subjects mm-hmm. today, and we're going to be we're going to do something amazing. We're going to fit this in in less than an hour. Three yes. subjects, not three, one. Right. We take an hour and then like, wow, it took them forever. No, three less than, in less than an hour. But there is a level of similarity across them. There is. Like, um, like I know so as we go through this, it's all about money. Money. It's all money. Money I mean, hits across all three of these. Yeah, money matters. It does. So, all right, so we're going to do them in order still, correct? Um, yes, yes. Okay, got, so we're gonna, go ahead. We're, all right. I'm going to pull them up on the screen right. here. And so here's the order. Here's what they say. We'll, I'll, I'll talk about each one of them really quickly. I'll, yep. Remember, what we do is we take from the book. And then we say, here's what Wes Benedict said. And then we expand on it a little bit. And this is to enlighten people, enlighten libertarians, so they know how to talk about it better. We make and, it more right. Enlighten enlighten non-libertarians, so they go, oh, yeah, you guys are totally right. I should switch parties and vote for you. That's Very the, similar that, to that. That's yes, exactly very what similar. our goal here yes. is. So okay. let's talk about them. Put them up on the screen. First one, minimum wage. Here's what he says. There should be no minimum wage. It's wrong to dictate to employees and employers what rates they have to agree on. And the minimum wage interferes with the economy and increases uh, uh, unemployment. I think I'm supposed to say unemployment, but I've got it written as employment. Then foreign aid. End foreign aid to all countries. That's pretty simple. That's simple. Uh That's pretty simple. And then Mr. Benedict here gets even more simple with farm subsidies. Get rid of them, period. Period. So so that's where we are. So Tub, take it away. All right, so let's let's see what we can do here is fast as we possibly fast as can. We can. All we're right. trying to maximize so, time for everybody. All right. So you, so we said that it is the, the all three of them have a similar topic about money. Mm-hmm. Here's what's even better about it. All three of them have a similar topic, other people's money. Oh yeah. They are all based off what we're telling the government's telling us to do with other people's money. Right. Remember government doesn't do anything. Right. They take the money and then they basically redistribute it. Right. So anytime they get involved, they're basically telling you, here's what to do with your money. Right. Or here's how we're going to take your money and give it to other people. Right. So we're always dealing, government's always dealing they're taking with your other money. people's money. They're keeping a cut. So. And then telling people how to use it. What they're doing is I, I'm a big advocate of let the market dictate. I say that. I, I can't tell you how often I say that. It's almost daily lately. I say, why don't we let the market dictate? Do you say why- that on the campaign trail? Often. Often? Okay. Yes. Good. Like yeah. I really do. I'm like, you know what? Why are we getting involved? Why don't we let the people and their desires dictate where money should be spent or what we should be doing or stuff? Because it, 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 it goes against many topics. Right. Okay. The, hey, it goes right across them. Let the market dictate. Okay. Now, inside of this one, if we start with the idea of minimum wage, I'm f- I, I've been saying this for years, mm-hmm. that minimum wage government has no place to be telling companies, this is what you pay somebody. 
the market will dictate what happens. Okay. okay. Now, here's what the argument tends to come around to. And I might be jumping ahead, but that's where we are. Okay. Because we're getting through this quickly. All right. So unions. Okay. Unions started and they, and a lot of things about the unions was what they did is they made a workable wage. They said, this okay. is a livable wage. This is our plan. And I think unions served a good purpose. I, I honestly, back in the day when they were saying, Hey, uh, we just want to bring work conditions to a certain level. This is what we want to do. Okay, fine. Okay. We just lost all the Republicans. Right. So no, but let me explain this out now. Okay. Let, let me come explain. Back. Uh, yeah, come back. We're not done yet. So here's what I'm saying inside of this. Mm -hmm. So those are all taken care of now. Right. Like a lot of those conditions that are put in place by the unions, However many years ago, depending on what union you're a part of, right? Those conditions have kind of been handled. I, I, I've heard that unions were responsible for the forty hour work week. Yes, or had a, had, uh, had, or a role. had the hand in it. exactly. And so these things have kind of been put into place. But now we can also look at the forty hour work week and how many people, one right. way or the other, it doesn't really apply. Yeah. But if you look, it I'm talking to, about like they, to they, so they, many non union people at this point. If if you look at like I always think of like workplace conditions, stuff right. along those lines. Those things have kind of been handled. Right. Here's what I have. Okay, so I actually had this conversation yesterday with somebody and about unions. And because I had somebody ask me, hey, what are you sure about unions? I'm like, well, okay, let me explain this out to you for a second. So before I moved down here to Florida, I was in Connecticut and I worked in a box shop. It was a union shop. I was a union rep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm down for the unions. If you're in Connecticut and you work at, yeah, you're all about a union. Right. Okay. So the union, and here's what I found. Okay. I found that as a union rep, I spent all of my time defending the bums. The people who didn't want to come to work. I spent all my time sitting in the foreman's office going, you know, this. And I was defending the bumps. I, that's the only way to phrase it. Okay. Right. But here's what happened. So it did give, the union did give us this minimum area of, this is what you're going to pay these people for this position. Right. Sounds good. But here's what else it did. It also said, you're only going to pay this high for these positions also. Right. So here's what happened. I moved down here to Florida. Same, I'm doing the same job. I'm working in a box shop, different company, non-union. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, the idea of working inside of there, just the overall mentality of accomplishing the job got mm -hmm. far better. Right. Those people, now here's what they did. They brought me down here. They moved me down here at a rate where I was making higher than the amount I would have been topped at, at the place I was working there. Okay. So now it didn't do any good. Now right. that union didn't help me. It actually, the union was holding me back because right. it was topping me out. I came down here and things were kind of like, okay, because now they decided this is what you're worth. Okay. And when they decided, hey, Tub, this is what you're worth. I go, well, thank you. I'll be down. Right. And that's kind of how that worked. Gotcha. I didn't need the government to say, hey, just pay him this. No, they decided, hey, we want this employee right. and we're willing to pay him X amount of dollars. Right. Now, here's the thing. It might not always be the hiring. It works out sometimes. Sometimes depending on what you do, that's you mm -hmm. get paid for according to what you do. Here's the problem. We, we've come into this thinking that says minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You can't raise a family on minimum wage. That's well, true. Well, you were never intended to raise a family on minimum wage. The outlay of it. Okay. Okay. When, when were you? I'm being contrarian. No, I know, I know you are. Not, not. But, but if you think about it, there was ne when was the, ever the intent that on minimum wage, you were going to have three kids right. and work 12 hours a week? The I shouldn't, shouldn't somebody that works 40 hours a week and they work hard for 40 hours a week? I'm uh -huh. No, I'm with you. Continuing the contrarian yep. here. Um, devil's advocate. Shouldn't somebody who works hard 40 hours a week, who does happen to have a family, shouldn't they get paid enough to be able to at least pay their bills and put some food on the table? Okay. Who determines their bills and whether it's enough? What happens is these people go, well, I want to live in a house that lives on the lake and I want to... Where, where do you draw that line then? Right. Or do, or do you say, no, we'll help you live like this standard only? So, well, who's the standard? Right. What happens when you start saying, well, I got to pay a livable wage. You got to pay me because I want to live like this. Now it's your employer's responsibility to right. get your... No, here's what tends to happen. Get a skill. And now, now bear in mind, I'm not saying college or anything like that. Get a skill. The skill that I learned to get me moving in that direction, I never went to school for. I was trained right. on the job and we I learned it. Right. I had a little bit of a desire. I got hired in the mill at the lowest position, lowest right. position there was. And I decided to work and learn that they're like, okay, we'll teach us. You want to come learn? Yeah, I do. Right. I took advantage of every opportunity I could to be like, yeah, I want to learn this. Yeah, I want to learn this. Yeah, I want to do that. And, and and I worked up to a level where I could have the lifestyle I wanted. Okay. It was not intended to raise three kids off of McDonald's. But what if I want to? Well, then that falls on you. Then you got to find a way to make it work. Then you're going to have to probably change the way you want to live. Change your standard. Okay. Here's the thing. You don't get to have the brand new car and the nice house and work 20 hours at McDonald's for three kids. It's not how it works. Right. So now does the government have the right to come in and tell McDonald's, hey, you know what? They really want to live like this. You now need to sacrifice. Right. So that your employees can have a lifestyle 
It okay. fits into that. Because here's what tends to happen. What happens when the government comes in and says, okay, McDonald's now, we're going to pay you 20 bucks an hour because it's getting out of hand now. We're going to pay you. You have to pay them basically $20 an hour now. Right. Okay. So here's what McDonald's does. You understand the individual owners. Let's also keep in mind, McDonald's is a good example. Individual owners own those. Right. Okay. So now, you know what they tend to do? The owners aren't losing money. The owners are going to go, well, I guess I don't get to go on vacation because I'm giving the money to them. No, no, no. You know what tends to happen? Prices go up. Right. So now the government comes in and says, hey, we're going to tell this is what you have to pay these people. Okay. Government told me I got to pay you. I'm going to pay that. But guess what now? The Happy Meal that was $4 is now six fifty. Right. Sorry, guys. So right. he, so now people start going, oh, I can't afford that, or I'm not going to afford right. that. So here's what tends to happen. You tell people minimum wage, they go, I can't afford to pay that. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to bring in that computer screen. Mm -hmm. That's what they've done now. They got a kiosk. You do it yourself. I can fire you now. Right. So now that they tell me I got to pay this amount of money, I'm all, I, I can only function in my business spending right. X dollars. Right. And I, th I think people don't think it through, right? Like, so, so imagine you got, imagine the wage somewhere is $15 an hour. Okay. And the government comes along and says, eh, that's not really enough. You need to raise the, the wage to $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I might have two positions that I would like to have filled for $15 an hour. That's $30 an hour mm -hmm. in wages. Just just, just mm -hmm. the simple wage. So we're not yeah, getting keep into, it easy. Yeah, yeah keep it yep. easy. Um, and uh, But if the government comes along and says, nope, it's got to be $20 an hour. Well, now that's $40. So now... What I might, where I was willing to maybe pay thirty dollars in wages an hour, mm -hmm. um, I'm now going to be paying um, thirty three percent more. Yep, because I'm going to have to pay forty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood, I'm gonna, my, my thinking as a business owner to say, well, do I want to pay thirty percent more in wages for these two positions, or can I just roll those two wages or those two positions into one? Mm -hmm. Can I make one person do both of those jobs, or maybe there's another person over here. Um, and I split this person's responsibilities up between two different employees. Yep. You know, one that, you know, you know this one will work the register. This one will make flip the burger. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so now I'm, I'm dispersing some of that, Yep. uh, some of that workload and then guess what, guess what happens in this particular case, in this scenario, instead of now, okay, so the government made it go up. So now it's $20 an hour. I was getting ready to pay $30 an hour, but now I only got to pay $20 an hour. So I've saved yep. that $10 per hour. And who gets that? Well, it's not the employees. No. Right? It could be like the shareholders you, or whomever. Yeah, you know what the one employee got? Fired. Right, right. And mm -hmm. and this is what I think people don't realize. And I, and I love this saying. I can't remember if it comes from Thomas Sowell or if it comes from Walter Williams. But one of them said- How do you know it wasn't from me? Is, um, it, is it really good? Because you're not a black economist. That too. So- um, Oh, so, oh. So it's based on the fact that they were a black economist. Is oh, it made valuable? So that's oh, what you're going with. All right. So there you go. So I, I thought you were canceled. gonna say no. It's a well, really good. I thought you were I'm gonna canceled. say it's a really good quote. I go, okay, yeah, never mind. It wasn't me. It, it, but go ahead. <laughs> so, but but these these gentlemen, uh, they, they had a lot of great things that they said, and one of them said that, um, you know, whatever the minimum wage is, mm -hmm. uh, whatever wage that I get from say working for you is better than zero dollars an hour. Yep. And see, this is the thing that I I, I keep trying to tell people. I'm like, okay, look, I get it. You feel in some way you feel for this person you want them to have a certain amount of money so that yeah. they can go to the store and buy some food and provide for the family and life maybe and... even occasionally go on vacation yep. i get that that's admirable to want that for people okay but there are consequences to everything that you do yep right and if we if we if we raise the wage such that a position either never gets created when that mm -hmm. that goes unseen all the time, yep. Or positions get downsized and removed. You know, they 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 they're they, hey, this position no longer exists because, you know, we got to cut costs and labor is the biggest is cost, right? Yep. So what ends up happening is uh, that somebody is now making zero dollars, and then not only that, because there is in this case one less position, mm -hmm. and there are still the same number of people that are vying for positions. So now the same number of people are vying for fewer positions, hey. which means I now have a slight advantage if I'm the employer because I can be like, well, I had two two positions and 10 people wanted them. So I only had to pick two out of 10. Mm -hmm. But now I only got to pick one out of 10. So now I'm going to be a little bit more choosy. Two, yeah. Because I'm only able to pick one. I can pick the best of these like, 10 people. I might have been able to pick, hey, this guy's really, really great. And this guy over here, yeah. eh, I'm going to give him a shot because uh -huh. he might have some potential, but I don't know. I'm I'm likely, unlikely to be willing to give that one guy a shot if I have fewer positions because I need it to be 
I need somebody to hit the ground running. Th th and think about what you're saying right there. Twenty dollars an hour is already left off, correct? If we gotta mm -hmm. pay twenty. Yep. So imagine because the government said no, this is what you have to do. Imagine if some guy came into you and said, Hey, listen, I need to work. You know, I got this, I got that, whatever. He mm -hmm. goes, Pay me eighteen. Mm -hmm. And I and like I can work at eighteen. I can make it work. I, even if I gotta work over here, I'll do eighteen. And you right. can't. Right. Because the government will not allow you to. Right. So now you had a guy who's willing to say, no, dude, I don't care. Sorry, right. dude. Yep. Can't so, do it. So so let's, yeah. And let's, uh, and, and I always tell people, I'm like, you know, minimum wage hurts people that have um, fewer resources at their disposal to get jobs. Okay. Like if I'm making a hundred hundred grand a year mm -hmm. at some company, the minimum wage doesn't really doesn't affect, affect me. me. And it doesn't affect anything that I'm doing when I'm trying to find a okay. job, right? Like, let, that's not really... Let me remember what I want to add to that. Go ahead, go ahead. And so what I tell people, I'm like, people in the minimum at minimum wage level, there's a lot of skills that they don't have that people at higher wages do have. Yes. So they don't have negotiation. And one of the things about negotiation is that I can even negotiate, like you just said, at a lower price. Now, mm -hmm. you can't go too low because then an employer is going to be like, what? But let me tell you a story. So I, uh, when, I, when I decided I wanted to be a developer... Okay. Uh, a web developer, software yeah. developer. I um, uh, I had a friend, he was uh, working for a big major bank and he was leading a team or something like that. And he was, uh, he, you know, he was telling me some of the stories about people that came in. And this was after I interviewed and bombed the interview. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, he was telling me, he's like, yeah. He said, we had a, you know, some, and everybody knows, this. everybody will agree. Some people are not good at interviewing. Right. They're terrible at it. Okay, so what they need is they need other areas of leverage to compensate for a terrible interview, right? <laughs> so he, this is the true story. Uh -huh. right? This guy came in, did a terrible job interviewing, and knew he did a terrible job, and they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna go with somebody else." And he said, "Look, I will work for free for one month. I think it was a month, but he gave okay. them. He was like, I will come and work for free to show you that I got the chops." To, to do the, this work. The, you'll want me after this. Mm -hmm. And they were like, and he's and my buddy told me, he said, we couldn't hire the guy and not pay him like that. You just can't do that. Right. He said, but we liked his bravado. Like, okay, let's see what you see got. what he can do. Let's see. Because if it doesn't work, you got, you okay, know? Next, and then what's and, over, bye, dude. And so he used this as a negotiate. Now, in, in that particular case, it doesn't really relate to minimum wage so much, but the idea does, right? But if because, you scrap the minimum wage, he can go, they go, I can't pay you nothing, I'll give you five bucks. And, Just... and, and here's how that example goes, and I'm going to steal again from Walter Williams, who okay. said, say you've got 10 people that are that are coming to do a, a very manual labor job. Maybe it's carry um, bags of concrete from one end of the, uh, of the uh, facility to the other end, mm -hmm. right? They got to get there, we don't have a forklift, you got to carry them. Yeah. Maybe we'll get you a wheelbarrow if you're lucky, right? So you have nine men that are strapping and big. Okay. And you have one woman that's not tiny, but she's not big. Okay. Immediately, you're going to be like, mm, okay, I've got nine people here. <laughs> right? That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. I got nine For this players, job. Yeah, these right? ones can love it. So you uh -huh. can say, uh, like looking at them, like these guys got muscles, they're big, uh -huh. they're broad shoulder, all that good stuff. They can clearly carry these bags of, of concrete. So good. Well, this job's paying $10 an hour. So now the woman says she really wants that job. She's been having bad luck. So she says, I'll do the job for $8 an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now it's a physically laborious job. Okay? So there's but that's not up a, to her to decide. So what I'm getting at is this is not a job that requires necessarily a skill set. It's not like an engineer where you right. have to have went to school yep. necessarily. This is a job where you could be surprised mm -hmm. easily. And so the woman is now negotiating with pay and saying, look, I am now which because is, what she's because really what if saying he's smart is, to say, hey, I know a way that's not loaded like this. I know right. a way that I can put it on this and right. drag it and, to where I'm going. Right. If you just work smarter than harder. Right. And and so the 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 idea here, a lot of people go, oh well, she's 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 getting less pay. Yes, she is. But again, eight dollars is better than zero dollars, right? But more importantly. Here's what it does. It actually gives the woman a lot more leverage in more areas, right? Because then she can say, "I'm gonna, I'm, I'll do it for eight dollars an hour just to show you that I can do it." And so now, but the person has to when ask, I do, yes, here's what you're gonna pay me. You're gonna, right. you're gonna bump me to twelve dollars because then, I proved you. And then later, she can say, "I would like a raise. I want to make ten dollars an hour like we're supposed to." Or, "Hey, you know, by this time I should be making eleven dollars an hour. Yep. I want eleven dollars an hour, right?" And so then, what happens is the employer might say. Yeah, no, you're a woman. You're doing the job just fine. I don't want to pay you. We make up some excuse, right? Yeah. But guess what she has now? 
She has job experience. experience. I, I learned she how to go do to this. his competitor. And, yes. And and go, hey, I, I, I have been this. doing this. And I found a better ready. way to do it. I bet while I did it, I found a better yeah. way, which now we can actually, I'll come in here and train your guys. Right. And we can double production with the same people so, you have. So is it unfair in, in a way? Sort of, but sort of not. Right. Because but she, she, chose did, but she chose that. She chose it. She chose it. But she, because the, at the end of the day, the reality is if you have job experience. Oh yeah. That is way more important than what wage you made. Mm -hmm. way more important so, right so and then the other thing that people don't realize is what she's doing is she's competing on the marketplace and she's saying look you can hire the big strapping guys you know you need three guys you can hire all three of them big 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 dudes but it's going to cost you more to do that and i'm telling you i can do the job is eight dollars an hour worth the risk right you know let me show you right I mean, now i'll go lug them right now i'll show you what happens right? when she says hey you listen i know those guys right there they'll Six of those have drinking problems. They're not going to be here. You know, right. they're going to you're going to miss one day a week right. with them because they they yep. went out. And, <laughs> you, and you know, and, there's and always to, something else that factors yep. in. And to further the story a little bit, just from my own experience, and I know we want to keep our mind. And we got two other topics, so uh, they'll, they'll be quick. I'm okay, sure. yeah, they probably um, will be. To, yeah, because I think this one really kind of it covers it kind of co covers a lot. Into, yes. <clears throat> uh -huh. So ultimately, when I was in the when I was in the military, I went to Bosnia. And I was in light infantry. Light infantry, we used to joke and just be like, all right, if you can carry it, you can have it. That's kind of our infantry, right? Like, we didn't get tanks and all this other cool <laughs> stuff. We weren't that kind of infantry. Okay. We were infantry, like, you carried it, that's what you got to have. Okay. Right? Kind of a thing. And so part of our requirements is that we had to march 12 miles in a particular amount of time. I can't remember the okay. time now. Okay, yep. And you had to carry, like, 70 pounds on your back. Mm-hmm. Well, as you can see, as you can see, Tub is a lot more bigger but, but, than I but am. But bear in mind, I am 6'4", 230. Right, 6'4", 230. I am 5'3", and a quarter, and You just ruined my 6'4", 230. You understand that? By the fact that you just sat us next to a Tub and you gave your actual size, right, there's right. like no way Tub's 6'4", 230. But if he has to carry 70 pounds and I have to carry 70 pounds mm -hmm. on our back, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. Probably so. You're bigger. You have more weight. You have, you know, more everything, you know? I mean, maybe not brains or anything like no, that no, but no, i mean no you're right drawing. no continue continue the direction so, you're going you're going just so, fine uh -huh. um and and there was a gen there was a guy in, in, in my group he uh he got caught fluffing out his bag so he didn't have to carry the weight so it looked like he had the weight in there but uh -huh. he didn't and it made me angry because i was like you sob i, I didn't say this to him you know, right he's bigger because he's bigger <laughs> right but i was like you sob you're whining and crying i did it why can't you do, do it right you know what i mean do so the idea that at these lower skilled jobs, which tend not to require a particular skill set mm -hmm. that you generally have to have a uh, prior to, because a lot of them you can learn. Yeah, right? yeah. You go to McDonald's, you learn on the job. Like, like they're not going to be like, oh, how many burgers have you flipped in your life, and did you work at six different places? And like, okay, like, like as a machine operator, I had a skill. It yes. was a skill that came down because yes. they wanted somebody in there that they didn't have to train. Right. Because training for my right. position I had is expensive. Yes. Okay. So they had that issue. Like, right. you know, we they don't want to incur that cost. They don't because they realize it's actually cheaper right. to bring them in at a higher rate right. than train them. Right. And that's, that's so now here. Now let me bring up something real quick. Sure. Um, so here's what was the argument that was being made. And I still kind of go, you know what? This still makes sense. And people are going to try to dispute it. Mm -hmm. But reality, we have to think realistically, not the way we want to make the argument. Okay. Let me explain this out for a second. So if minimum wage gets moved from $12 to $20, mm -hmm. okay, chances are, depending on what type of job you're in, somebody was probably already making $20. Right. So here's what's going to happen. The people who had already worked from 12 to 20 go, wait a minute, I've been here for two years, I have these skills, they don't have these, they're going to pay the same as me? They're going to go, no. They're right. not going to pay them the same as me. Right. Now, I, so it's not just, everybody thinks, well, that bottom level gets it. No, 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 you need to understand. That effect. keeps rolling. Right. Okay, so that now, as somebody who's making 20 goes, I should be, uh, I was $8 more than them before, well, nothing's changed except for you gave them more money. I'm right. still $8 better than them. Right. I'm 28. And how far up does that go? Right. And people never think about that. They right. think, oh, just give these people this. Yeah. At some point, somebody's going to go, I can't keep yeah. affording this. And yeah. that's what, so here's what the argument is. We'll go, oh, do you mean you tell me McDonald's can't hire two people at this rate? Yes, they can. They probably could, but it doesn't stop at these two people at the right. very bottom. Right. It goes to the ones above that and the ones above right. that. And then the manager goes, wait a minute. 
I'm running this joint and I'm making a dollar more than these people, right. this isn't going to work. Right. And the owner has to factor all of those things in. Right. So when we sit on the outside and go, well, just give them the money. Right. It's never that easy. Right. And have we not seen over the past couple of years, look, just give them the money? Have we not seen what that's turned right. into? <laughs> when right. the government just gives money? And, and I think that that's what happens. Because even though at this point right here, remember my argument was it's other people's money. Yep. Okay. So at this point right here, the government's telling business owners, do this with your money. Right. When we get into the foreign aid and the, what was it, the farm subsidies, same issue. Right. It's government. Now at this point here, now government's giving out the money. Right. But it's other people's money. Right. And in the minimum wage is an additional. It's not just other people's money. It's other people's labor. Yes. Because if I go in and the minimum wage is $10 an hour and I go in and I want to try to compete and outcompete somebody else and they're bigger guys and it's maybe a laborist, you know, a job that's intensive labor, mm -hmm. but I think I can do it and I think I can show them up and then maybe even, you know, maybe even rise up in the ranks, right? Whatever. Um, I might want to use that as leverage because I don't have too many other things as leverage. If it's literally physical labor, there's not much leverage to have. I can't I'm, say- You're not going to get bigger. I because... can't say, I went to this college instead of that college, so my education is a little bit better yeah, and I'm a little bit care. sharper. We don't like, care about that. That doesn't matter, right? right? Like, so some of these other things that, that you might have in other jobs, you know, like like my wife has a double master's in engineering and, and business management. Mm -hmm. And so if some other engineer was competing for her for an engineering role, she could say, well, I have a double master's and this person only has it, you know, just the, um, just the master's mm -hmm. in, in just you know, scrubbed it with a yeah, single master's degree. Yeah, loser. Uh -huh. but, you know, so, so she can use that as, as, as comp uh, competition. Yes. Right? When you're at I can the bring minimum this wage. other aspect in right. that that person can't. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're at minimum wage, there's not much for you to work with. So when we come in and we say, minimum wage has to be this much money. What you're telling somebody is I'm capping you with the very few things that you have at your disposal mm -hmm. to compete with somebody else for that position. Right. And I think that's unfair. Like why I, opponent, uh, people never ever answer and say, this is why I think it's okay to tell you how much you're allowed to make with your labor. I should be able I mean, it's my body. Yes. Why should I, if I want to accept $8 an hour so That's... I can get a job and not have zero, Yep. who the hell is somebody else to get in between and say, no, you can't. And, that's not fair. And that's all minimum wage Cause, does. Because all they're really telling me is I would rather you have zero yep. than have eight. Yep. You, it's either zero or 10. That's my option. That's my choices for you. And mm -hmm. that's wrong. What else we got? We cover minimum wage? No, I mean, I'm on minimum wage. What else we got? No, I, I think, I, I think, I, well, here's what's funny. Okay. It goes along the minimum wage, but it is our foreign aid. Yep. So okay. Is that what we're diving into? I mean, we're just going to the order. Yeah, I, I, when I say yes. what do we got, I mean, yes. like, what else do we have to talk about minimum okay. wage? Okay. But here's what I'm going to say. As crazy as this sounds, I found a way to connect foreign aid okay. with minimum wage. All right. Let's, okay. Let's put up our foreign aid real quick because people it's may have forgotten. It's pretty easy. There's, there's, there's a whole lot Knock there. Knock it off. And foreign aid to all countries. So there you have it. That's what Mr. Benedict said in his book. So now we're going to expand on that one. Okay. So once again, now this is other people's money. They only are able to give money to other countries based on the taxes that they collect from us. Okay. And so now you know what happens when you give somebody minimum wage, you take taxes from them. Right. So no matter what, even if they decide you're going to, you're not even going to get the money that they're getting you. Right. They don't tell you, they say, hey, we're going to raise your money. Oh, but by the way, because you made more, Mm -hmm. We're taking more. Right. And now when we take more of this, let me tell you what we're going to do with it. We're going to give it to another country that doesn't even care about right. you. You mean like $14 billion that went to Ukraine? <laughs> this is what I'm getting at. This is exactly what you're saying right there. Is I'm getting $20 an hour. Now, how many times have you learned you work overtime and sometimes you end up losing money? Yeah. Because you, you get bumped up in taxes. People calculated that. Oh, we used to do that all the time. Yep. We were all about that. So now they're going to take more money from you. They got you money, but they're taking it from you. Mm -hmm. And once again, now they're not Now they're not only going to not let you have it. They're going to send it to another country of people right. where you don't care about. Let's be honest. You don't care about them right. at all. Right. And so my concern when it comes into all this money for foreign aid. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. 
people watching us or whatever, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like, okay, okay, I, I don't even care. You know what I really liked about Donald Trump when he was in? He exposed a lot of needless spending. Right. Like, it just seemed like every time you come up, like, whoa, we're sending money where we're doing what with this? Like, he, like, right. he laid a lot of it out there, whether you like right. him or not. Right. He exposed a lot. And you're like, why are we sending all this money right. to other countries? Right. And, and and that's the money that they decided we didn't need. Right. That's because that's people don't I, I don't know how they miss that connection. They're like, oh, yeah, we should help those people. OK, so you, you're willing to take your Well, no, I don't really want to come out of my paycheck. Well, what do you think is happening? Right. Government doesn't make well, they print money, but they do not make money. Right. Right. So they, it's an, they're taking it from you no matter what. Right. And have we not learned that government does not do well with taking people's money? I mean, right. they take it well. Right. They take it very well. Right. It's what they do with it they're after. Right. Um, there was a, um, I can't remember her name, but there was a representative. I think she was out of California or whatever. And she was, um, she was a congressional member. And they had Jamie Dimon from um, uh, one of the big banks. I can't remember which mm -hmm. bank it was. But they were basically grilling him. And she... Her name is Katie something, I can't remember, but she had this whiteboard and she's like, all right, so I'm going to take this fictional person who's making minimum wage or some wage like right mm -hmm. at your company. And she so she kind of made up this scenario. And then she's like, so, and then she looked up prices okay. in, in this area. So she's like, if this person is making this much money at your bank as a bank teller, and then here are some of the basic, you know, like rent and yeah. food and stuff For like your that. area. Yep. And then she was going down and then she walked all the way down. To the point where the woman actually was in this fictitious woman was in like a negative four hundred dollars, okay, and she was like, so, and she was like, how do you expect this person to make money, or, or so, how do you expect this person to live with the with the, with the minimum form. wage that you're uh -huh. offering, right? This is the slave wage, whatever, right. right? And uh, so, one of my friends, Dan Berman, the the yellow hat guy, right, the yellow taxation and theft hat guy. You saying I should know that? Uh, okay, but maybe you do, maybe you don't. Do, but anyway, are you saying I should? Um, just pretend where, like you do where? in case he watches. Yes, yes. Oh, Dan, Dan the, the, the hat guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> he did a counter video. And as Katie went along, I think her name was Katie. As she went along, he was like, all right, estimated taxes on property, estimated taxes for your vehicle, estimated, ta estimated taxes here, 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 here. Uh -huh. And so then he said, at the end, he said, actually, if you didn't take taxes, uh -huh. she would have a surplus of like $300. Something like that, right? I, so if you're really worried about her having more money, right. don't give it, don't take it from the business right. owner, take it from the government. Right. So so here we are at the same time that we're saying, oh, we need to raise the minimum wage because these people don't have enough money. Look, you Here's know. Here's an idea. Keep them at their current one. Don't take all those taxes from don't them. Take all they the taxes, probably do just fine. The taxes that you're spending on garbage, mm -hmm. right? And, and 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 when I say garbage, I, I mean, no, no, uh, there's a lot of things that are- Don't explain that out. Because I don't feel like you got to explain that. No, no, garbage. I want to be very clear. I want to be very clear because I know people are going to be like, oh, you're oh, you trying to help these people is garbage? Ukrainians is garbage? Or what about when there's a tsunami over uh -huh. there? No, I'm not saying that's garbage. And there are ways where we could help people and they, and they do. get the money back. Look at how blah, much blah, money blah. is given right. through, like when there's natural disasters and stuff right. like that. Watch the money that's privately given. Right. The, raise, the funds people, that are raised. Helping people is a great thing. Yep. But the government people does step up not help do. people. The government... They are basically like loan sharks, all right? They're going to give money, but they want something in return, and it's not what the American people want. The American people, they want, you know, people not to get blowed up in their country. Yeah. They want people to be helped out when a tsunami ravages their island, right? Like, that's what the American people want. What the government want, what, wants, what they tr what they use our money to get mm -hmm. is not the same. That's so, when, so don't you dare try to take me to task because I'll... So I'll make a whole podcast episode against you. Here's oh, uh, Liberty Dad it's, Media. Liberty, Liberty Dad, Dad Media. Liberty Dad Media. Comes out swinging, right? Media. Like something like, Every yeah. time, watch, I'm, I'm going to start getting oh, that into geez. your language. Liberty oh, Dad geez. Media. All right, so here's what happened. <laughs> so it, in my little notes here, it, I, like I said, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about this. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So if my neighbor came to my house, took money from me, mm -hmm. and sent it to the people down the street that I don't like, I'm like, right. I don't even like them. Their yard's a mess. It looks like your yard out here. Stuff so it's there. not because of their skin color? Not at all. Okay. Just, just, just clarifying because no, we are. Oh, it's very. Okay. So their yard is a mess and they don't keep up with things like, oh, we're going to give them money for this. I'm like, okay. They probably I, don't have the privilege like you do. To... It, that's true. They have a lawn guy. Um, so inside. So here, person, here's, here's what's person. funny is we wouldn't want our neighbor to do that. We wouldn't want our neighbor. I don't know right. what you said. I'm going to leave it there. I, we wouldn't want our neighbor to do that. We wouldn't want our friend to do that. Right. We don't want our employer to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you take my money to give to them? What are you talking about? Right. But we allow our government to, and we don't right. question it. We're actually okay with the fact that right. our government, 
once again, we're, oh yeah, we want to help those people. And then it's contingent yeah, but, with strings and everything else, right? But why do we accept it from it, our government? It's if we not, even, not accept it. It's not even charity to begin with. It's not. And so it's very easy to do great things for people with other people's money. Right. It, like, let's just be very clear. It's always, you can always be the hero and always help everybody. If right. you're just taking, if I, if I right. get to continue my own, if you notice, right. government's not cutting back. But the government, government's not cutting back what they do. The government is literally the epitome of what people think of as rich people. Like, let's say that I was a, a billionaire. and People would be like, dude, he doesn't do anything unless he's getting something in return. Mm -hmm. Our government doesn't what? do anything, anything unless they're getting something in return. Mm -hmm. And it's not even their money. Right. They're using our money to get their to advance their own interests. And, and you understand that many times. And they make us feel guilty if we don't want to give it. There's the problem right there. Oh, you know, you should want to get okay. But what about the idea that you're giving to things that I do not right. agree with? Right. The government's taking it and they're doing it and they're shoving it in a lot of places right. that we don't even know about most of the time. Right. And they're shoving it there to things we probably would not agree right. with. Here's the thing that there are many times where we have donated to different funds. Right. Oh, they're doing this. Let's help that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even take government. So right. I, I don't want the argument to be, well, then those people won't get helped. Yes, they will. Right. Next time a natural disaster or something comes up, you watch private funding. Yes. That usually will outlive and, and I'll give all of that government. It does. Anyway. And, and, uh, I don't remember the number anymore, but I know it's in the billions in charity mm -hmm. in the U.S. right now. Billions. Even as bad as everything billions. is, we still give this stuff. Right. Now, I don't know about this year or the last year, but right. this, this is a couple of years ago. But and it, when I say a couple of years ago, I don't mean like 30. I mean like literally like three or four years ago, I saw the, da the data. And it was like billions of dollars every year from Americans to charity. Yeah. So that's from private individuals, from wealthy individuals, whatever. Even and, corporations, and, even and, companies and, will do it. They'll and, make a big donation towards yeah, something. And, yep. and charity comes in all forms. So like I used to ride in something called the MS-150. It's a 150-mile bike ride from here to Daytona and back over two days. And in order, in the way that the MS uh, organization works, you have to raise, I think, a minimum of $200. Okay. Okay, in order to ride. Okay. So as long as you raise 200 bucks, you can ride. And then that $200, uh, my understanding is the MS... Uh, organization is really good at about getting that to actual people that good. need it. Really. Okay, yeah. So, so it's a very good organization, mm -hmm. right? But like, I it didn't even it wasn't even my money. I just used my time and then right. told other people like, hey, will you support sponsor me? me and will you sponsor me mm -hmm. as I ride down? You know, and the and there was prizes for like if you got like a thousand dollars, then you got to be called like a top banana, and you know, you got some accolades. Did you get to wear a banana suit or something like that? Yeah. So I no, I didn't get wear a banana suit, but I did. I did when you get to be a top banana because that I was really what thousand. they called it. Yeah. And the I got over, yeah, I don't remember how. I don't remember how or why. Was there but, pictures? But, but involved? they have this. Yeah, there's pictures out there. But, but no there's, bananas. There's, there's, there's no. Okay. But there's that, that's that's how these charities work. Yes. They give you incentive. To and do then here's things, what happens right? when you hear about these charities that are doing these type of things, and you hear bad stuff about them. You know what you do? I'm not going to give to them anymore. Right. We had an issue with that with one right here in town, big national thing. They started wasting money, right. and people were like, "Oh, I'm not giving to them anymore." Right. Because then they decided, "Where's here's where I want to put my money." Right. They said, "I don't trust that. Yep. I'm not doing it anymore." Government doesn't give us that opportunity. Right. Government doesn't give us the opportunity to go, oh, we know we don't trust them. Right. We don't like that group. We don't like what they're doing with it. Don't right. put our money there. They do it anyway. Right. And then let's just be honest. We have a, all this other time we've been lying. Right. There's a huge government out there with a lot of employees, and those employees need to be paid. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we're like, oh, we're talking about charity and giving things, you know, money to help maybe the Ukrainians if somebody wants or money to help a, um, a country that just had a natural disaster mm -hmm. or just maybe poor people or whatever. whatever. Somebody, you know, people that need heart transplants, whatever the case may be, you know, um, how better to spend that money from me to them than to just go from me literally to them. To no them. little person. No middle person. Nobody's cutting anything out of this because for if their somebody expenses, in the middle has to do work, they well, gotta they're going to want to get paid, right? That yep. makes sense, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so what that means is maybe, maybe if we, it's an argument to be made that if they cut out taxes, I would not give any less or any more to charity than I am now. Okay, but if my, uh, or you know, so yeah, the taxes, you know, it, it's not like I would increase, but if. Overall, I think what you would see is that some people would increase, some people would decrease, some people would well, the same. I mean, here, but what you would find is the money that's going to them overall would be more direct, and it, which actually turns into more money to which them. Turns into more money to the source but, that needs. But it. also bear in mind, if you think, okay, 
easy numbers. Like this, one, I just went through right. easy numbers. So let's say the government says, okay, we're going to take one dollar from every person for whatever this fund is, right. and they get X amount of dollars. Okay, so now they say, okay, we're not doing that anymore. Now private people are going to. Here's what I found: if people are going to donate to something, mm -hmm. they tend not to give a dollar. Right. So you might have somebody says, listen, if I'm going to help the Ukrainians, right. well, I'm going to send fifty dollars. Well, now they just took place of forty nine other people who said, I'm not giving to that. Right. So you technically find that even still. More money still goes. Right. And that's based off of the fact that get them out and let's just let the people decide where they want to do it. We right. have found people will take care of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? They Maybe do. not to always be the standard that we want or whatever, but when they have some input, like, oh, no, I want to give to this or I want to give to that. Right. We tend to do pretty there well. There is no shortage of charities. No, trust me. They are all over. I'm running a campaign. Right. I mean, there's that's charities. A, that's a great one. There are that's charities. Example. Yes. But but I'm, I'm saying like, Name something. There's a charity. You'll for find it. it. Yeah. There's something. You know, for it. it doesn't matter and, but what then, it is. But then you can research how well does that company right. do with it. Right. And I, I feel pretty confident that nobody would look at the way the government's doing it and go, oh, yeah, follow that model. Yeah. Like they're, they're not, that's not going to be the model to follow. In, in fact, that's funny. That's funny that you mentioned that because I don't think I've ever heard somebody say, you know what? Organization A over here would be so much better if they did it like the government did. <laughs> Nobody like, has ever know. made that argument. Ever. Not in the history of peopledom. That's a long time back, dude. You're making a big I'm here. pretty sure. All right, so you know. so let me ask you this. All thing. right. Farm subsidies. All right, let's talk about farm subsidies. Is there, let me be honest. Well, go ahead. I'm going to bring it up because I, I, in case people forgot. Yeah. In case you forgot what it said about farm subsidies. Down at the bottom. See, look down. Okay. Get rid of them. Period. Whew. Man, these are now. Let me tell these you, are brief. Like I, I am not, I am not the expert on farming and all the money that goes to and who okay. doesn't get paid to farm. Because I know there's big, a lot, big things about how government bailed them out, and now technically the government covers all the farming and stuff along those. I'm not the guy, right? Okay, and I'm not going to pretend to be the guy. Remember, we had this conversation earlier about we right. got to admit when we go. I don't know. Right. Okay. And let me just tell you. So for this portion here, my research was almost none because right. I'm not the guy. I'm not going to spend 12 hours of my time looking up the best way to do farm subsidies. Right. Okay. Um, here's what I, my simple answer says this. Government's taking money from other people to give to other people. I don't like it. Right. Okay. Like, right. and here's the thing is, I don't care if it's farm subsidies. I don't care what it is. I'm right. going to hold true to my thinking that says if government's taking it from me to give to them. Right. Now, I, from my understanding, government's gotten heavily involved in regulations and everything towards right. farming that they basically made it to where farmers can't just on their own do well. Government Correct. had to come in and do something. Correct. Okay. So I, yep. I'm very minimal. I just want to ask one question. Okay. I'm going to try to answer it. Okay. So, because here's what the obvious question becomes Are you ready? Who will grow food then? If the government's not involved and there's these things going on, are we just nobody's going to grow food and we're just going to starve? Because you know somebody will say something like that. We're not going to have roads or food. <laughs> Who will build the roads? Who will grow the food? I guess nobody. Then I guess we all just starve to death. Because you know somebody will believe that. Somebody will believe that the government's not doing it. Well, here's right. what's funny. The reason why there's less farmers is because government got involved and right. told them you can only do this on this land. You have to replenish certain things. Like I know there's a lot right. of guidelines. There's actually a guy, uh, was it Travis Bull Johnson? He's running uh, Minnesota. Sounds familiar, but I'm drawing a blank. I'll look it up real quick. Maybe what they need to do is go to his site on Facebook. I'll tell him we did my shout out for him too. Right. And we'll, we'll put his thing out. Let me pull up just so I can make sure I get the statement. Yeah, right. yeah. But it's Travis Bull Johnson. I, I always remember that because I actually follow him on Facebook. I don't follow. In fact, my Facebook numbers are all wrong. It's telling me that it keeps showing I'm following like 94 or 106. I'm following 63. So if anybody's watching this, those numbers are all crazy. Okay. Okay. Just for, it makes no difference. So I'll just, okay. So Travis Bull Johnson for Congress. I, I want to make sure I have the state right. Minnesota. Okay. I did have it right. Minnesota. So, so here's somebody, if you want to, for more information, there have been times where something like this comes up and I've actually shot him a message right. Uh, right out in front of everybody. Like, hey, you know, what about this? And he's really good about going, hey, because he's a true farmer. Like right. he's really doing this. Right. Okay. So once again, I, I'm the advocate of default to the people who know better. Right. And listen, I live in the middle of Jacksonville. What right. do I know about farming? Right. Nothing. Right. So inside of that, um, if you get it, like I said, I sent a message to him before and he's, he's really good. I'm like, Hey, does this make sense? And he'll, and he's good. Like, he's great about answering like, Oh yeah. Hey, this is what we did. This is what works. This is what doesn't work. Here's why we do this. Here's why we don't do this. 
pretty thorough, actually. Gotcha. So if you get a chance, if you're on Facebook or whatever, okay. go check that out. Travis Bull Johnson for Congress. Now, I'm going to let him know that I gave a shameless plug right there. Right. Um, but I, I've defaulted to him. Right. And I've looked at different things that he says. So I think we can wrap it up on this note. Okay. Because neither one of us are terribly familiar with farming. No. Um, <laughs> I, I have no desire to live on a farm. I no. mean, I don't even want to. Like, I had chickens for They a get while. up at like 4 a.m. and they yeah, go and like work. At, that's like. You know, and nasty like stuff in the weather underneath the cow at four in the morning or something. They have like, like that. machines. And that stuff doesn't now. even sound yeah. appealing to me. No, nothing well. about that. No. So I'm just like, okay. Actually, I did. Have, I did have a number of chickens for a while. I was I was a chicken okay. rancher. So, but that has nothing to do with all. The, I, so, know, I, so I, you know, so I will I will have to say that I don't have any knowledge in that area. But here's what I do know. Okay, I have yet to find an area in government where they do well. Right, where where they say, you know what, we know better than the people that are doing this. Mm -hmm. So therefore. Oh, we, right. We can, we can properly regulate and tell you what to do. And like you said, when they regulate people, sometimes they kind of put them in a position where they do need a subsidy, yes. right? Like it's not because they actually need one because they can't survive otherwise. No, because they would be just fine. It's usually when you start, when, like so far as I found, I have yet to find an example where somebody needs a subsidy and there's not a pile of regulations on them that prevent them from figuring things out and saying, you know what, this is the best use that I can make of my land and make some money, right, or my resources. Mm -hmm. And so I say, since the government has yet to prove that they can do anything well, even take taxes, uh -huh. they're not good at that either. Well, they do I mean, take, let's be honest, I they mean, take them They're good well. at taking a lot of taxes, I, but they're not efficient. I, I, I often say that, Government does two things well. Take taxes, collect taxes, collect taxes, and make war. Not win war, make war. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, the problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They them. can definitely they cause problems. They do those problems. two things. Yeah, they, they, they cause... They, I, I, yeah, I take it back. You're right. So two things Government well. is very good at causing problems. Okay? There we go. When they touch something... Yep. They, like the ant... The, it's, the, it's like the opposite of the Midas touch. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> right? Like the, everything, everything turns to not gold. Right. Everything, everything turns, turns to, to coal. Right? Uh -huh. like, no, not coal, because that's actually... Uh, uh, crap. But, well, manure... Never mind. Whatever Whatever serves no purpose at all, Right. government is... Government touches it and it turns into government. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.